Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. All right, joining us here on Real Agriculture at Cano Lab in Brandon, we have uh, soil guru, Regis no. Karamanis <laughs> of Coke Fertilizer. And uh, Regis, when we get the soil sample uh, results back, uh, going through the main macronutrients, what, w what kind of numbers we should be looking at. Okay. Uh, let's talk about yeah. nitrogen. What, uh, yeah. what should the end numbers say? Uh, one thing to keep in mind with nitrogen, you know, when we're talking about available nitrogen in the soil, that's the nitrate part. And what we mentioned to the people, sometimes they're trying to find out if the fertilizer they applied is there. And they cannot find it because, you know, at application time, fertilizer is still in ammonium, ammonium form. So keep that in mind that when you get your soil test, that's, you know. So now, when you look at the soil test, you've got to look at the different depths, okay? And different labs will give you different options. One thing to remember, what is extremely important is that the number you have has been calibrated for local data. And most of the local data, whether, you know, in any of the prairie provinces, you know, based on the calibrations that were carried out here, is, no, is for the 0 to 24 inch depth. So uh, if somebody gives you 0 to 6, most likely they'll be using a fat factor to convert it to 0 to 24 and so on and so forth. So, you know, look for those numbers and um, as far as nitrogen is concerned, of course, different crops will have different, uh, different criteria, you know. Um, there is not one generic, you know, thing to look for for nitrogen. When it comes to phosphorus, though, there are some generic things to look. And with your, you know, uh, I would like to mark down if your soil test is less than five parts per million and if they're using pounds per acre, it will be less than 10 pounds per acre then you have a hundred percent probability of getting a response. If your soil test is between five and ten parts per million, and I'm not, you know, that's ten to twenty pounds per acre, you got a 75 percent probability you're going to get a response. If it is between 20, I mean, I'm sorry, 10 and 20, you got a 50 percent probability, and if it's over 20, you've got a uh, less than 25% probability of getting a response. So 10 to 20 is considered maintenance level? So 10 to 20 is where most of your fields should be, in essence, you know, and that's where you get your bank for your back <laughs> as far as, you know, your first 15, 20 pounds, plus you apply some for maintenance and you maintain those levels. I mean, being you know, over 20 is excellent, you know, if you can do that. Uh, one thing we have to be very careful is that uh, uh, our phosphorus recommendations are driven by normally how much we can place with the seed. And when it comes to crops such as canola, there is limitations to that. So consider, you know, a 60 bushel canola crop, which is something which is not unusual these days. Well, that will remove 54 pounds of P2O5. Raise your hand if you're applying that much. Not very many people, but even if you were, to be applying 54 in the year where you expect to get 60, the those 54 are not going to go into this year's crop. Only, actually, canola is one of the best utilizers of phosphorus because of the top rooting, and the use efficiency can be 30%, 35%. Still, that it's 20 pounds. So how you've been fertilizing over the last 10, 15, 20 years, it will influence what you get together to today and what you fertilize today will influence what you get tomorrow. You cannot just, you know, stop fertilizing for phosphorus, okay? So, so going back to the paper that you get back from the lab, the Olson number is the, the one to look at in Western Canada? The Olson number is the bicarbonate and as well, if you're doing with uh, labs in, there are labs here in, in like ALS in Saskatchewan, Exova, in Alberta or uh, Farmers Edge here in Manitoba where they use modifications of the Kelowna test that's been calibrated and uh, th th it, it maybe gives 10% to 50% higher numbers but you know uh, in the main they're pretty much the same numbers for both you know for uh, Olsen and Kelowna and those have been calibrated with you know field experiments in Western Canada okay so so Moving then, yeah, to potassium. So potassium, uh, one thing to remember is that uh, 
uh, the generally accepted critical level in Western Canada based on soil, a lot of experiments, is 125 parts per million. This will be 250 pounds, uh, which means if your soil test is less than uh, that, you'll have a 95% probability of getting a response. How much response you're going to get will depend very much on how low it is. If it's 50 ppm, you may be getting like a 1,000% yield increase, you know. But if it is 110 ppm, you may only get 10% yield increase. When it goes above that, uh, the research actually, some of my own research that I've done, is I found that uh, with malt barley, you know, we get some really good responses. Uh, when it comes to con uh, crops such as canola, peas, and wheat, the responses actually with, you know, we should not be looking into applying any potassium. And, and one thing to remember, potassium and phosphorus recommendations or, uh, you know, uh, safe rates are additive. In other words, if your safe rate, say with canola for phosphorus is 30 pounds and you decide to put 10 pounds of potassium, now you've got to subtract 10 pounds of phosphorus. And that will be goofy in some ways because you get a heck of a lot more big bang for your buck for phosphorus than you would get from potassium with canola. Okay. Okay? So that's one thing to keep. Then another thing to keep in mind is that some people suggest that you have to balance phosphorus against other nutrients such as calcium or uh, magnesium or, or uh, uh, you know, attain a, a potassium saturation that is entirely irrelevant for uh, Western Canadian soils. It's meant for soils that are close to the equator and has no relevance to us. So don't do that because either you over applying potassium or in some cases you apply and you don't have enough, you still have a deficiency. So, you know, just don't do that. When it comes to sulfur, you should not be growing canola without sulfur. <laughs> uh, and as I mentioned, there are two critical things to remember. The soil test has large errors, probably one of the largest, the worst soil tests. I ran a soil testing lab for a few years in Saskatchewan. And I've always said, one thing you know about soil test sulfur is if it's low, you know it's low. If it's not low, you don't know what it is because the test could be, you know, is, has big error, but also the variability within a field can be so great that some areas of the field can mask the rest, the rest of, the, of the field. So just to be sure, you know, uh, always apply 10 pounds, you know, it's a reasonable amount of minimum of sulfur. Another thing to remember about sulfur, we, uh, there is work that was done with conventional canola uh, cultivars, uh, open pollinated and conventional, where there was a seven to one, six to one nitrogen to sulfur ratio. There was the optimum ratio that we had to adhere to. Research that was done subsequently to that with hybrid canola show that hybrid canola uh, can utilize sulfur at any ratio. And in those experiments, there were actually 27 in the, in, in the study that I carried out. We used 1 to 1, 6 to 1, and 12 to 1 nitrogen to sulfur ratio. We couldn't separate really any particular ratio. There was a master's thesis that followed up at the University of Manitoba that showed that the rooting system of uh, hybrid canola explores the soil volume much more efficiently. So again, make sure you apply the required nitrogen amount and the required sulfur amount don't worry about balancing at any given, you know, ratio. All right. Thanks for your time, Regis. My pleasure.